Remember in peace of the Lord Jesus to everyone. We're going to open the word of our God in Jonah. The Old Testament. Jonah chapter 2 verse 7. Jonah 2.7 Amen. Has everybody found? It is written, When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. Lord Eternal, we, thank, we praise you, thank you for what we have shown to your people, to your church, for this moment of fellowship that we have enjoyed. As Father, in your word, you once again bless us. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. My brethren, the word speaks about Jonah. And when we pick up the book of Jonah, chapter 1, verse 1, it says the following. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai. But in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 14, verse 25 says the following, which he had spoken through his servant Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet who was from Gath Hefer. So we see that all the way back in the book of Jonah, it says that God spoke to Jonah, who was the son of Amittai. In the book of Kings, it says that the same Jonah, he was a prophet. He was a servant of God, and he was also a prophet of God. And he was used by God throughout the kingdom of Jeroboam. And more than that, and it says that this Jonah, he had a father. His father was called Amittai. And Jonas's father was also a prophet. So Jonah was a son of a prophet. He was a prophet. He was, and he was also a son of a prophet. And they inhabited. And Jonah was born, lived there, and was buried in the same place. This place called Gath Hefer. And the name Jonah means dove or, or generated by a dove. And the name Amitai speaks about my truth. So the Father is my truth. And the name Gath Hefer means, the translation from Hebrew means press, wine press or uh, vineyard press. So when we speak about vineyard, it is related to the, the church, the place where he was born, lived, and also was buried. So the father, is, it means it's my, he's my truth. He speaks about the father, God Almighty. And Jonah here, the translation is dove, and it is related to the one who has the Spirit of God and was generated by the Holy Spirit of God. And the vineyard is also related to the Son Jesus, to the jar of salvation. So we see that this individual, he was inside of a prophetic plan of God towards his life. And we see that this individual he was well instructed by his father because he followed his father's steps. His father was a prophet. He was also a prophet, prophet of God. And the word speaks, my brethren, that God 
spoke to John in the same way that you would speak your son or daughter or your brother or sister. God spoke directly without any intermediary. And God also gave us the same ability. Paul himself says, we have boldness to enter into the sanctuary of God and present ourselves before the Lord through the precious blood, blood of Jesus. Why? Because we have received, like Jonah, as well, the joy of salvation. We have been generated. The word of the Lord was generated in our lives through the Spirit of God. And we are in this wine press, or the vineyard, which is the church that the Lord has risen at this last hour to proclaim His plan, His project of eternity. So God comes to Jonah, presents Himself to Jonah, before Jonah, and speaks to Jonah. The word says, my brethren, that Jonah, he took an action when he heard the voice of God. And what was the action that Jonah took? The action he took was to get up, to run away from the face of the Lord. And then the book of Psalms it says the following, Where am I going to go from your spirit? How am I going to run away from your face? But that was the understanding that Jonah at that moment for personal matters or his own understanding and thoughts because of his human reason, he didn't want to do what God had determined to him. He was a prophet. God had already used him many times. But on that specific topic and that business, he didn't agree with God. If you read the book of Jonah, you understand that he had there his own reasons. The word says that when he tried to run away from the presence of the Lord, not obeying the voice of the Lord, and we have read throughout this month regarding the work of the, the Lord, about David, the work of obedience, even in Samuel, he says it's better to obey than to sacrifice. To sacrifice, because if you don't obey, bad things come. Comes the trial and difficulty and the adversity. And that's what happened with Jonah. He took the action of not obeying and running away or attempt to run away from the face of the Lord. And then the trials and the problems came. And the word says, my brethren, that in a certain point in the life of Jonah, when he was now in a great trial, in a great difficulty, he, he remembered the Lord. And it is interesting that if we begin to read the book of Jonah, we will realize that he had many opportunities to plead to the Lord to go out of this trial, this situation. And the ones who were ungodly, the, the people that were with him in the boat, came to him and woke him up and asked him, why are you sleeping? Plead to your God. And many times, as servants of God, we are like this. Sometimes God even uses, uses people that are unfaithful people, ungodly people to wake us up. Even the a donkey, the mule of Balaam, he was, it was used to call him to um, pay attention to the project of God for his life. So we see the difficulties, the problems. And Jonah, when he realized that there was no way out, there was no solution, when he no longer see a light at the end of the tunnel, when he could no longer get rid of that situation, he did something interesting. And that's what we just read here tonight. He says, When my soul fainted within me, I don't know if the brethren had gone through this situation. In order for your soul to faint, is a moment there which the person is already has no hope. It's a moment in which, like we say in the Brazil, 
a person is, has given up, is throwing the towel, can no longer withstand that the moment that the person is going through, the moment is going is crossing. His soul was afflicted, anguish. In the book of Psalms, it speaks about that. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. And what he needed now was this God. His God, the God that is alive. A God that helped the one who is in need. A God that hears the plea even of the one who is not walking according to the plan of and the project of God for their lives. Because at that moment, Jonah, son of God, that man that had the Holy Spirit upon his life, the, the direction that he had taken was different from God's plans. So then he began to faint. But at this moment of um, situation of anguish where he was going down, that he was losing his strength and hope, he says something interesting. He says, Then I remembered the Lord. But Brandon, in order for me to remember someone, it's because I forgot about that one, that person. And many times, we are in moments of difficulty in our lives because we forget about the Lord. We sang a song that says the following, the Lord God is so good for me. Many times we forget that of this God that is good, this God that is love, this God that is peace, this God that is grace, this, this God that uh, helps us, that gives us sustenance, that put us back on our feet. And Jonah could have thought, oh, I made a mistake. The Father's Lord's Prayer says, May your will be done. But he could have said, I didn't do God's will. God wanted me to do something, and I did something completely different. And many times, men face themselves in this situation. They are concerned about pleading and presenting before the Lord because they think that if they present before the Lord, a judgment may come upon their lives. But in fact, they already have a judgment upon their lives. The only thing that could have happened now was the mercy, mercy of God to manifest upon them. And that's why he remembered this. When it says he remembered the Lord, he's saying he remember the grace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, the goodness of God. Because as a prophet, he was able to see that. The alerts from the God to the people of Israel, when the people converted, when the people heard the voice of God, God always changed what was determined to each one of them. And he remembered that. He remembered the grace, the love, and the mercy of God. So then he does the following. When my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord. And today is a day like every other day in which we have to remember, remember the Lord. I failed, I sinned. The word says, my brother and sister, that God does not love sin. But there's a detail. God loves the sinner. And there is something else. God takes no pleasure in the ones who die. Because the, die, the desire of the Lord is to give salvation to everyone. The love of God is for salvation in the redemption of the soul that is now fainting, that is going through a moment of anguish, affliction, and suffering, and the faith is going away, extinguishing, is withering in our lives. That's the moment in which we have to remember the Lord. And he says, I remember the Lord. And he says more. And my prayer went up to you. So he makes a supplication. He makes, he says a prayer. He makes a plea. He cries out. There's a verse that says, From the womb of hell I shouted out. So he was going through a moment of great difficulty. And he shouted out. 
and my brother and sister, God heard his cry, his plea, his prayer. I remember the Lord and my prayer went up to you, into your holy temple. See the privilege that this man had, Jonah, in praying to the Lord and seeing his prayer coming to the, into your holy temple, coming before God's altar. And this privilege is the same one that we have at this moment. We, the ones who have been generated through the blood of Jesus, the ones who have been delivered, who have the, the first fruit of the Holy Spirit, who have this privilege, who have this access, this direct access to God through the supplication, through the prayer. And so we see that Jonah, he wanted to vanish, he wanted to run away, he wanted to be as far away from God. But in no moment, he was far away from God, because in every moment, God was there, present, waiting for his supplication, his plea, his prayer. And he says the following, I remember the Lord, and now I'm going to ask the brethren, how about God? I think God remembered you. I'm going to tell you, God didn't remember you. God didn't remember me. God does not remember anyone because we only remember something that we forget. And there in the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, if I'm not mistaken, it says the following in verse 15. Can no one forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. So Jonah forgot about God, but God no moment forsook Jonah's. To Jonah, the Bible says, he was a servant and was a prophet of God. He was the son of a prophet. He was born in Gath Heifer. So in other words, so he, his birth was the fruit of a wine press. And the Bible says, he, he, he speaks about this, how we were born. We have been born out of the wine press. The curse that brings peace to us was upon him. He was afflicted. He was wounded by God. He was oppressed. There's a song that also says, So that I live, you died. In order for me to be healed, you got sick. So we see that the life of Jonah, in, this, in the same way as my life and your life, it costed a high price. And the price of this wine press, this anguish that Jesus went through in the cross of Calvary in order to save me, in order to save us. And that's what we need to remember every day. I remember the Lord. I remember the grace of God, the favor of God, the mercy of God. It doesn't matter the moment in which the brother and sister is going through, the moment in which the brother is crossing, if it is of anguish, affliction, or problem, or difficulty. What matters is that we may not forget the Lord. When he prayed to the Lord, when he pleaded to the Lord, when he remembered the resource that he had at his disposal, when he makes use of this tool, which is prayer, the word says, my brethren, that a prayer came into uh, God's holy temple. So now, if you pray now, if you plead to the Lord, your God, your prayer, through the blood of Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, will come into the presence uh, of the holy temple of God and will come so that you will receive an answer to your prayer, to your need, to your plea. The word says, my brethren, that when the prayer came into the holy temple, the Bible says that God gave an order and the order was to deliver him in order to free him up in order to save Jonah from the situation in which he was. And we are going through a moment of great difficulty. The world is going through this. And at this moment, we 
need to make use of the prayer. We need to pray so that our prayer may come into the holy temple of the Lord so that we may receive an answer from the part of the Lord because my brethren, we cannot even judge Jonah because you know why? Because we all have seen and we are destitute from the glory of God. The wage to sin and disobedience is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Blessed be the, man, the name of the Lord. And that's what Jonas was going through. The gift, the favor, the benefit of the life through the grace, the mercy, and the love of God, which is Christ. So he was able to reach because he remembered, because he prayed, and because his prayer came to the throne of grace of God. And in this moment in which you are living, so that we may be able to be delivered from everything that is around us, and so that we may not also perish, it is necessary to pray to the Lord and to do what God has determined for our lives. When Jonas Jonah get out of that situation, he does what God had determined for his life. And this is very important, is to obey the Lord. And Jonah understood that he could no longer run away from the face of the Lord. You know why? Because God was at the, all the time with his eyes gazing towards his life. And everything that he did in his disobedience, it brought to him a result a result that was not positive. But when he reconciles with God, God takes him out of that whole situation. And this is the pro plan and the project of God for our lives. So Jonah spent three days in a great difficulty. Three speaks about the life, death, and resurrection. He had to go through that moment in order to be able to understand better the plan, the project of God for his life. Amen. We're going to have now a song and then we're going to finish with a prayer.
You may, my brethren, here the Lord was showing to us uh, the spiritual gift, and one of the spiritual gifts the Lord was showing that there was a visitation of angels into our homes. And especially three homes have been visited tonight by angels. And it was seen that in those homes there were roses, red roses. There's even a song that speaks about red rose, Jesus, the red rose. And it was necessary to do a re to replace those roses because there was a smoke, and this smoke was being dissipated into the entire environment. It, and there was a smoke and there was dissipated oh oh I understand there was a smoke a smoke that came it's like the right word is the frankincense the smoke that would come and would take over the entire environment and would clean up the environment and the instruction was so that we need to take care of the rose so that it would not wither who's the rose the rose is Jesus the the plan of, project of, of the Holy Spirit in our homes, in our lives, in the life of the brethren. And many times, we can say that we may not give worth to the presence of this rose in that place, and uh, things do not walk according to what God would prefer that they would go. But tonight, because of the mercy of God, God does visits those homes and those families and there this environment is purified but the Lord is leaving a message and instruction so that we need to take care of those roses three roses that, went, that represent the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit to give the worth to the project of God Jonah for a moment he wanted to go astray from the plan and the project of God, but he realized that the best thing is to be at God's feet. There is another spiritual gift in which the Lord was showing. There were a group of people that were sitting down near a small creek, and the waters were crystal clear waters. And they were very thirsty to the point of fainting and even dying. But they would not drink from that water because they were questioning it. They were questioning if, if this water was fresh, if this water is proper for drinking. And they many didn't even want to try. And the water is Christ. The water is Jesus. Right? The water is what brings refreshing peace consolation, relief. The water purifies and also quenches our thirst. The water is related to the sacrifice of Jesus that besides purifying you and saving you and delivering us, also bring peace, comfort, re refresh, and relief to our soul. Many people at this time, they even question if is this water, if this word from God will satisfy my need or quench my thirst and resolve my problems? And I tell you, my brother and sister, it will. It will. And there is more. How can you die a thirst with water right next to you? It's a crazy thing, right? Try it. The word says the following. God says the following. Test me. Jonah was in a situation that was very difficult, in a very complicated situation. He said that even the anguish of hell was taking over him. The situation was very complicated for him. There was a thirst, a need for him to get out of that situation. And there he remembered the Lord and he tested the Lord. And he, he tested God and God we always hear that God is mercy and God is love and he tested it and even in his obedience in me, even though he was in difficulty God went there and helped him and delivered his life and do this do this test with God God says test me 
the drink of this water. Remember, the Samaritan woman, if you drink of this water, the normal water, you thirst again. What is the uh, salvation is free because Jesus is free. By grace you are saved. It's not something that comes from you. It comes from God, so nobody glorify himself. So taste it, try it, so that you can have a meeting with God. Taste and try. Remember the Lord at this moment. Pray to the Lord for the blood of Jesus so that your prayer may be accepted and come to the God, the throne, the throne of the glory of God, and you see the results. And you see that God will give an order to bless you, to protect you, to deliver you, to open doors, to, to satisfy all your needs. God is good. The Bible speaks about this. God is good. See that God is good. Test the Lord. Have this experience with the Lord. Amen. Let us finish. Amen. So let us stand up and finish the service. Lord, we praise you. We're thankful for the grace and favor, undeserving favor and the mercy. Because, Lord, we know that still in this situation, which many times we are faced with, away from you, Lord, outside of your plan and your project, when we plead to you, Lord, when we remember your, your grace and your favor and your love and your mercy, you come with your, the help and the prov provision, Lord. And that's why at this moment we plead once again for the power and grace and the mercy that is in the blood of Jesus to ask, Lord, that you may once again help us and sustain us and, and save us and take us out of the situation in which we are living. Lord, placing, Lord, once again in a position that is pleasing to you, Lord, where that you may speak to us and that we may be able to obey you, Lord, in all our ways, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be every day more faithful to you and to accomplish the mission that you have prepared for our lives. Bless your people, the homes here tonight may be visited by your Holy Spirit and that you, Lord, may have your eyes, uh, your ears pay attention to our supplication and our prayer, Lord, and that you may give order to your angels on behalf of each one of your children to help them and support them. And tonight we may have a new experience with you, Lord. We pray to you, or we thank you to, to you in the holy name of Jesus. In the name of say, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And to all, the peace of the Lord. The bread that one that can open up the, your microphone and speak to the other brethren. We are going to be praying. There is, is a, uh, the, there is an intention that the church may open up again, at, at least in a large part of Brazil. Here in the United States and Canada is to be defined in September 5th. And this weekend we are going to have a seminar. The brethren should register, look for the responsible of your group and deacons uh, so that you may participate of this event that is going to take place this coming Saturday, the 29th. If you have any difficulty, look for the responsible for your group of, of assistance. It's very easy to do the registration. I have done mine here. It's very easy. If whoever is from Group B, look for John. We have the brethren from Group Wayne. Luciano, Davi, Marcus, Ronildo. If you can, just look for me. And I have access to internet here, and I will be able to do this for you. What is important is that you set aside this day for the Lord. It's, it's a Saturday. Saturday is a day of rest. We can rest in the Lord. Amen. Stop at home and turn the internet on and so that we can listen to the class. The class are going to be very good. Going back to the beginning, the means of grace, the prayer, fasting, early dawn, for the moment in which we are living. It's going to be very fruitful for us here. Amen. And to all, the peace of the Lord.
A paz do Senhor Jesus. A paz do Senhor, meus queridos irmãos. A paz do Senhor Jesus. A do Senhor Jesus. Senhor, meus irmãos. A paz do Senhor. A do Senhor, irmãos. A do Senhor a todos. A do Senhor a todos. A do Senhor, irmãos. A do Senhor.